The Zodiac Killer also referred to as the Zodiac or simply Zodiac was an enigmatic serial killer active in California in the late 1960s and 1970s. As infamous as he was, he only has a confirmed body count of five, though he is suspected of committing as many as 37 murders in total. The first known confirmed Zodiac murders took place on December 20, 1968, on Lake Herman Road in California. The victims were David Arthur Faraday, 17, and Betty Lou Jensen, 16, both of which were shot with a .22 handgun. The Zodiac then remained inactive until July 4 the following year, when he shot another couple, Michael Majo, 19, and Arlene Farron, 22, while they were seated in a parked car on the parking lot of the Blue Rock Springs Park in Vallejo. Majo survived, though he suffered severe injuries, and was able to provide a description. On August 1st, the Vallejo Times Chronicle, the San Francisco Examiner and the San Francisco Chronicle received near-identical letters from the Zodiac in which he took credit for the murders, proving his guilt by stating several facts about the crime scenes, such as what the victims were wearing, how their bodies were positioned and what brand of ammunition he used. The only signature was the Zodiac symbol. The letters also contain one part of a three-part cipher designed by the Zodiac, who ordered all three papers to publish the ciphers on their front pages and threatened to go on a killing spree over the weekend if they didn't comply. All three papers published the cipher, which was cracked after a little more than a week by teachers Donald and Betty Harden. In the decoded message, the Zodiac claimed to have been killing in order to collect slaves for his afterlife. The next Zodiac letter came the day before the cipher was cracked. In it, the Zodiac named himself for the first time and gave more details about the murders. The next murder took place near Lake Berryessa on September 27. This time, the victims, Brian Hartnell, 20, and Cecilia Shepard, 22, were tied up and stabbed instead of shot. Hartnell survived his injuries, but Shepard died two days later. During his next killing, the Zodiac diverged from his pattern even further and shot and killed a cab driver, Paul Lee Steen, 29, in Presidio Heights in San Francisco on October 11 after riding with him. This time, a partial fingerprint in blood was found inside the car, along with a pair of gloves, which were, however, considered to be too small to fit the man described by the witnesses. They were later linked to a female passenger of Steen. At first, the police were led to believe that the killer was black, which was later corrected. Before that, however, a pair of uniformed cops on their way to the crime scene spotted a man fitting the Zodiac's description dressed in a dark jacket and walking away from the crime scene mere minutes after the shooting. Three days later, the San Francisco Chronicle received a letter in which the Zodiac threatened to kill all the passengers of a school bus and included a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. Though this was the last of the Zodiac's confirmed killings, he continued writing letters and claimed responsibility for several murders during this time. It is generally believed that he lied for attention. One theory suggested in The Monster, the Zodiac Killer podcast is that other contemporary events got a lot of media attention, such as the Manson family murders and the Vietnam War, and the Zodiac kept writing letters in an effort to stay in the public consciousness. The prime suspect in the case, at least in the eyes of the public, was and remains Arthur Lee Allen. The authorities began investigating him after they were told by one of his former friends, Donald Cheney, that Allen had told him about an idea he had for a novel about a serial killer who called himself Zodiac and did several things the Zodiac killer did or threatened to do, such as taping a flashlight to his gun and killing the passengers of a school bus. In hindsight, Cheney's story has been viewed with a lot of skepticism in part because Allen was accused of molesting one of Cheney's sons, but also because his account of when Allen supposedly told him has shifted over the years and sometimes added details not present in the first telling, for example, after the abduction of Kathleen Johns, Cheney also started saying that Allen had talked about tricking women into thinking their tires were coming off and using that as an excuse to loosen them. Like what happened to Johns. Also worth noting is that Cheney and Allen's situation isn't unique and there were other people at the time who made similar claims about people they knew. Allen was however a skin diver who had been to Lake Berryessa on several occasions. 
He also admitted to having had bloody knives in his car on the weekend of the stabbing but claimed that the blood came from a chicken he had killed for dinner. After a warrant for his trailer and handwriting was secured and carried out, his fingerprints were compared to the partial from the cab, his guns compared to the Zodiac evidence and his handwriting to that of the letters. None of the tests came back a match and Allen was let go. In 1991, Majo was tracked down and shown a lineup of old photos of Zodiac's suspects. After he fingered Allen as the killer, there were talks about formally charging him with the murders based on circumstantial evidence against him, which were, in turn, heavily contested by others. Allen died of natural causes before any trial could take place. To this day the case remains unsolved and the Zodiac killer's identity is still unknown. Letters The next murder took place near Lake Berryessa on September 27. This time, the victims, Brian Hartnell, 20, and Cecilia Shepard, 22, were tied up and stabbed instead of shot. Hartnell survived his injuries, but Shepard died two days later. During his next killing, the Zodiac diverged from his pattern even further and shot and killed a cab driver, Paul Lee Steen, 29, in Presidio Heights in San Francisco on October 11 after riding with him. This time, a partial fingerprint in blood was found inside the car, along with a pair of gloves, which were, however, considered to be too small to fit the man described by the witnesses. They were later linked to a female passenger of Steen. At first, the police were led to believe that the killer was black, which was later corrected. Before that, however, a pair of uniformed cops on their way to the crime scene spotted a man fitting the Zodiac's description dressed in a dark jacket and walking away from the crime scene mere minutes after the shooting. Three days later, the San Francisco Chronicle received a letter in which the Zodiac threatened to kill all the passengers of a school bus and included a piece of Paul Stein's bloody shirt. Though this was the last of the Zodiac's confirmed killings, he continued writing letters and claimed responsibility for several murders during this time. It is generally believed that he lied for attention. One theory suggested in the Monster, the Zodiac Killer podcast is that other contemporary events got a lot of media attention, such as the Manson family murders and the Vietnam War, and the Zodiac kept writing letters in an effort to stay in the public consciousness. The prime suspect in the case, at least in the eyes of the public, was and remains Arthur Lee Allen. The authorities began investigating him after they were told by one of his former friends, Donald Cheney, that Allen had told him about an idea he had for a novel about a serial killer who called himself Zodiac and did several things the Zodiac killer did or threatened to do, such as taping a flashlight to his gun and killing the passengers of a school bus. In hindsight, Cheney's story has been viewed with a lot of skepticism, in part because Allen was accused of molesting one of Cheney's sons but also because his account of when Allen supposedly told him has shifted over the years and sometimes added details not present in the first telling, for example, after the abduction of Kathleen Johns, Cheney also started saying that Allen had talked about tricking women into thinking their tires were coming off and using that as an excuse to loosen them. Like what happened to Johns. Also worth noting is that Cheney and Allen's situation isn't unique and there were other people at the time who made similar claims about people they knew. Allen was however a skin diver who had been to Lake Berryessa on several occasions. He also admitted to having had bloody knives in his car on the weekend of the stabbing but claimed that the blood came from a chicken he had killed for dinner. After a warrant for his trailer and handwriting was secured and carried out, his fingerprints were compared to the partial from the cab his guns compared to the Zodiac evidence and his handwriting to that of the letters. None of the tests came back a match and Allen was let go. In 1991, Majo was tracked down and shown a lineup of old photos of Zodiac's suspects. After he fingered Allen as the killer, there were talks about formally charging him with the murders based on circumstantial evidence against him, which were, in turn, heavily contested by others. Allen died of natural causes before any trial could take place. To this day the case remains unsolved and the Zodiac Killer's identity is still unknown. Letters Modus operandi From the accounts of the few survivors of known Zodiac attacks, it is generally believed that the Zodiac dressed in black clothing of various types, 
depending on the month, and, at least on one occasion, wore a dark hood decorated with the zodiac symbol. His methods varied also, with some victims being dispatched by an automatic pistol, of several types, or blade weapons, most notably what was probably a military-style knife. According to one of his letters, he, during the Christmas killings, had a pencil-sized flashlight taped to his gun in order to be able to shoot in the dark. The Zodiac's usual pattern of attack was to target Caucasian teenage couples, strike when they were in some secluded area, mostly lovers' lanes, and slash or in a car and kill them by either shooting them or stabbing them with a knife. His method of approaching them is known to have varied. When he attacked Majo and Farron, he just walked up to the car and started shooting at them without saying a word, while, during the Hartnell Shepherd stabbing, he approached them pretending to be a robber before instructing Shepherd to tie up Hartnell with some pre-cut lengths of rope and then tying her up himself. During the latter killing, he claimed to be an escaped convict who had killed a guard and needed their car and money so he could flee to Mexico. When he killed Paul Steen, he got into his taxi, shot him in the head with a 9mm, took his wallet, car keys, and a bloodied piece of his shirt, the latter of which he would later send to the Chronicle. He also, most likely intentionally, acted in locations where jurisdictions overlapped, as a mean of slowing down the authorities. In one of his letters, he claimed to have killed some of his victims by fire and by rope. Though cases involving strangulation were linked to the Zodiac, the Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders, no cases involving arson were ever linked to him. After the Farron Majo and Hartnell Shepherd attacks, he called whichever police department was closest to where the attacks occurred from a pay phone and claimed responsibility for the crimes. Profile The Zodiac Killer was profiled by John Douglas in his book, The Cases That Haunt Us, as being a narcissistic and paranoid social misfit and loner, who was mainly driven by the need for attention, power and, most of all, credibility. He felt the urge to prove his intellectual superiority, in order to compensate his own feelings of inferiority and inadequacy. The unsub had also a self-conscious compulsiveness, meaning that he was obsessed with others underestimating him and unappreciating his skills, being also convinced that society wronged him. In all likelihood, he spent the majority of his life with his mother, with whom he had a difficult relationship at best, and was not very successful with women. It was deemed probable that he had some relations with both Riverside College, where Cherie Jo Bates, a suspected Zodiac victim, was killed. Douglas was indeed fairly sure to attribute this murder to him, and Deer Lodge, Montana, the location of the prison he allegedly named during the Hartnell Shepherd attack. However, the validity of this claim is doubtful, as the prison name was merely deduced by a policeman who interrogated survivor Brian Hartnell. He may have spent some time in the military, probably in the Air Force or the Navy, where he was likely trained in codes. If this be the case, he would have been soon discharged out of medical reasons or no reasons given, because he couldn't cut in such a structured, disciplined environment long term. He liked and was familiar with weapons, being probably a hunter, and had technical expertise, demonstrating skill with numbers and codes. The unsub also might have had a private work area, where he kept the materials he needed for his writings and press coverage of his crimes. He probably complained, with a confidant of some kind, most likely another loner, about law enforcement demonstrating incapacity in the Zodiac case. In his letters, as in his crimes, the offender displayed a double nature, well-educated and highly intelligent, although illiterate, and highly organized, although, at least in some instances, disorganized, he left survivors, fingerprints, and was seen by several witnesses, including two policemen. This combination provides a mixed representation. It is also apparent, from his communications, that the Zodiac was prone to mood swings, sometimes being cleverly taunting, sometimes falling from grace, trying to compensate his fear and inferiority complex through virulent words or gross tauntings. It was deemed likely by Douglas that, as the Zodiac was constantly trying to sophisticate himself and his modus operandi, the most probable cause for his sudden stop was his own fear of running out of luck, after having been presumably spotted and interrogated by two uniformed patrolmen, 
just minutes after the murder of Paul Steen. It cannot be excluded, also, that the Zodiac committed suicide after the murders ended. Murray Myron, a criminologist and colleague of Douglas, upon analyzing the letter Zodiac sent to Melvin Belly on December 1969, concluded that the unsub was suffering from severe depression, and that he was going to eventually commit suicide. Douglas, in turn, although convinced that the Zodiac did feel even more alone and alienated around Christmas time, and agreeing with the fact that he would have committed suicide one day, thought the letter was a play for sympathy. A theory, proposed by Anglo-Canadian criminologist Lee Meller, proponent of the expressive-slash-transformative violence theory, was that the Zodiac, by sending letters and leaving messages on the crime scenes, was dealing with a process of identity negotiation. Due to his feelings of inadequacy, he wasn't capable of having an acceptable identity and suffered from recurring crisis, trying to recompose his fragmented identity in the guise of a self-styled, self-named killer. The majority of the expressive-slash-transformative criminals analyzed by Meller was single, sustained having never grown up, presented an unstable vocation and masculinity, and were obsessed with police and military culture. Criminologist Donald Lund theorized the Zodiac was a sexual sadist whom killed as a substitute of sex. Survivors and witnesses of the Zodiac attacks described him as approximately 5 feet 8 inches to 5 feet 10 inches in height. Curly brown or light reddish brown hair worn in a crew cut. Wearing horn-rimmed eyeglasses and usually wore dark clothing, usually wool trousers and dark navy blue or black windbreaker jacket, with distinctive military jump boots known as wing walkers. Medium or slightly stocky build. One survivor describes the Zodiac as having an odd gait, that is, he had a peculiar, lumbering or heavy walk. Boot prints found at the Hartnell Shepherd crime scene were size 10 one half. Survivor Brian Hartnell describes the Zodiac's voice as slow and measured and having a unique sound and cadence with a monotone. Confirmed. All of the following were killed in California. December 20, 1968, Lake Herman Road, Vallejo, David Faraday and Betty Lou Jensen, shot with a .22 pistol. David Arthur Faraday, 17, shot once in the head at point-blank range. Betty Lou Jensen, 16, shot five times in the back as she fled. 1969. July 4, Blue Rock Springs, Vallejo, Michael Majo and Arlene Farron, shot while seated in a car with a 9mm pistol. Michael Majo, 19, shot four times in the face, neck, and chest four times, survived. Darlene Elizabeth Farron, 22, shot five times. September 27, Lake Berryessa, Napa, Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard. Brian Hartnell, 20, stabbed six times in the back, but survived. Cecilia Ann Shepard, stabbed ten times, five in the torso and five in the back, survived, but later died at a hospital two days later. October 11, Presidio Heights, San Francisco, Paul Lee Steen, 29, shot once in the head with a 9mm pistol inside his taxi. Possible. April 10, 1962, Oceanside, California, Ray Davis, 29, shot once in the back and head with a .22 rifle inside his cab. June 4, 1963, Santa Barbara County, California, Robert Domingos and Linda Edwards, both shot with a .22 rifle, 1. Robert Domingos, 18, bound and shot 11 times. Linda Edwards, 17, shot 9 times. February 5, 1964, San Diego, California, Johnny and Joy Swindle, both shot with a .22 rifle. Johnny Swindle, 20, shot 8 times in the back, left thigh, left ear, and head. Killer took his wallet after dying from his wounds. Joy Swindle, 19, shot three times in the back, left arm, and head. October 30, 1966, Riverside City College, Riverside, California, Cherie Jo Bates, 18, beaten and stabbed 48 times, 2.
June 8, 1967, Alameda County, California, Ana Dean Molina and Fermin Rodriguez, both shot with a .22 handgun. Ana Dean Molina, 35. Fermin Rodriguez, 36, shot in the back, chest, and shoulder. The Zodiac claimed responsibility for a total of 37 victims, including his confirmed ones. Most of them were unnamed. Named ones include 1970 March 22, Highway 132 near Patterson, California, Kathleen Johns, 22 and her unnamed infant daughter, abducted in their car, both escaped. June 26, date of letter Sergeant Richard Radetic, possibly, was shot. September 6, Donna Lass, 25, disappeared, never found. Note, the Zodiac was suspected of being the perpetrator behind the so-called Santa Rosa hitchhiker murders, in which at least seven female hitchhikers were all murdered in Sonoma County and Santa Rosa in 1972 and 1973. The suspicion was based upon similarities between an unknown symbol in one of his letters and the Chinese characters left behind on a soy barrel that was carried by one of the victims. He had also stated his intention to vary his M.O. in another letter. In addition, Zodiac suspect Arthur Lee Allen was independently suspected of being the killer. He owned a mobile home in Santa Rosa at the time of the killings, attended Sonoma State College, and once held a job at an elementary school in the area. The book Zodiac Unmasked claimed that chipmunk hairs were found on all of the victims and that Allen was collecting and studying chipmunks. To date, there have been two infamous killers who emulated the Zodiac killer. Heriberto Eddie Seda, a.k.a. the New York Zodiac. B. July 31, 1967. Was inspired by the Zodiac killer. Shot ten people, three of which died. Targeted his victims based on their Zodiac signs. Used zip guns. Arrested after non-fatally shooting his half-sister in the back. Is currently serving time in jail for murder and attempted murder. See full article here. Sito Sakakibara. Japanese. 14 years old at the time of his arrest. Real name unrevealed due to Japanese child protection laws, though a leak revealed it is possibly shiny Chiro Azuma. Killed a 10-year-old boy and an 11-year-old girl. Also claimed to have assaulted three other girls. Wrote letters with a language similar to that of the original Zodiac. Released after several years of imprisonment. See full article here. Gallery of letters. Some believe that the Zodiac copied his symbol from a watch, whose brand was called Zodiac. Arthur Lee Allen, the prime suspect, received a Zodiac Sea Wolf watch as a Christmas gift not long before the murders began. It has also been theorized that the Zodiac was, to some extent, inspired by the most dangerous game. A 1924 short story about a wealthy count, Zaroff, who traps people on his private island and hunts them in the woods for sport. A phrase from his first cipher, because man is the most dangerous animal of all, sick, supports this theory. Prime suspect Arthur Lee Allen admitted to being a fan of the story, saying it had made an impression on him. The story can be found here. The Zodiac Killer has several similarities to the Phantom Killer, the unidentified perpetrator of the Texarkana Moonlight murders of 1946. In both cases, the killer was masked, targeted couples, killed the majority of their victims by shooting them and attacked them when they were in or near their cars in lovers' lanes, neither killer was caught, and they had almost identical body counts. The most obvious difference between the two is that the Zodiac wrote several taunting letters to the police and media while the Phantom did not brag about his crimes in any such way. Another is that there are no clear signs that the Zodiac was sexually motivated while the Phantom sexually assaulted a female victim with his handgun. The Zodiac was active around the same time and in the same state as a suspected serial killer who committed the astrological murders. The victims, who were women, were killed in various ways, including strangulation, drowning, throat cutting, and bludgeoning, sometimes after being drugged, and were connected by the fact that they were dumped in ravines and were killed around astrological events, 
such as the winter solstice, equinox, and Friday the 13th. One of the zodiac. The Bay Area is breathing a lot easier tonight. Authorities say a menacing letter received yesterday by a Vallejo newspaper was not sent by the infamous Zodiac Killer. Betsy Gebhardt has details. The letter sent to the Vallejo Times Herald look hauntingly familiar. I will be out driving around on Halloween in my death machine, the writer said, looking for kitties to run over. Immediately, I recognized the style, and uh, I'm, I don't pretend to be a handwriting expert, but I know what the Zodiac letters look like, and this one said, uh-oh, th this may be him again. It was here at a park in the Vallejo area in July 1969. A 22-year-old woman was shot and killed. Just eight months earlier, on a lover's lane in the Vallejo area, a couple was shot and killed. Then in August of 1969, the Times-Herald started receiving chilling letters from the so-called Zodiac Killer. The Vallejo police detective who handled the case years ago is convinced the Zodiac was responsible for those three murders. Now retired, Jack Mullinax did not want to speak on camera. But even before Justice Department investigators announced the latest letter was a hoax, Mullinax had come to the same conclusion. He said the style looked like it was traced from a book. Several samples of Zodiac's letters are in the book Zodiac, published last year. In the early 70s, the Zodiac corresponded in code to the San Francisco Chronicle and Examiner. Police have connected him with at least five killings, although the Zodiac claims at least 37 victims. The Zodiac killer was never caught. But Detective Mullinax said he had one strong suspect, a highly intelligent man he won't identify, who was most recently a retail clerk in Santa Rosa. He says they never had enough evidence to charge him. In Vallejo, Betsy Gebhardt, KICU, TV 36 News. The infamous Zodiac killer is dead and that his mysterious code has died with him. But there's a cop in Central California who says he can prove otherwise. Doug Kriegel has details in part two of our exclusive report, California Killers Still at Large. Springtime in the California wine country is the most glorious part of the year. But local police are still regularly reminded of Zodiac, the uncaptured killer who claims to have murdered more than 30 people. Here in the Napa Valley, police are still getting calls about Zodiac. People have this mystique about this killer who has baffled the police and baffled the media and that nobody can solve his cryptic code. The secret code created by the Zodiac killer was mailed to California newspapers and police. Now this homicide investigator in Central California claims he has broken the code. He put in three circled eights, used three eights. And perhaps that could be his, his date of birth. Three eights or 24, perhaps he was born in 1924. Detective Harvey Hines of Escalon says his analysis of these cryptic symbols reveals the Zodiac's name is Cain. We also have another clue. He installed another clue in the, in the uh, cryptogram. It reads name Cain or name Cain, C -A -N -E, reading from right to left. And perhaps that would be his ethnic background. Hebrew reads from right to left, perhaps he's Jewish. So if we take the, the Zodiac for his word here, his name is Cain, K-A-N-E. His name is Cain, C-A-N-E, born in 1924 under the sign of Taurus with a Jewish background. Indeed, there is a man who used the name Cain, who has a criminal record, who was born in 1924. He's an ex-mental patient who fits the profile of the Zodiac killer. The man called Cain now lives in rural Northern California, but he hasn't been arrested. No one would take it serious, I believe, because I was an outsider. I had no vested interest in it. And uh, what could a small town cop accomplish that they couldn't accomplish? In fact, big city police rejected evidence from small town cops like Harvey Hines, and police rivalries hampered the Zodiac investigation of possibly 30 murders all over the state. There have been about 1,500 active suspects in the Zodiac murders. Some police officers, including the man called Dirty Harry, became so obsessed with Zodiac, it nearly destroyed them. Super cop Dave Tusky, a San Francisco homicide detective, and the model for the Dirty Harry movies, vowed to catch the Zodiac, but he never did. Tusky's career soured. He's now a security guard at this San Francisco hospital. Families of the Zodiac victims became close to police, and many officers just burned out because of frustration. This case is probably the only thing that would get me out of retirement, 
uh, and go back into law enforcement work. This is a composite sketch of the Zodiac Killer 20 years ago. Today he might look something like this, and he's probably still at large. Possibility for the New York shootings has written letters to the New York Post in 60 Minutes claiming that he is San Francisco's notorious Zodiac Killer. Police say they think it's all a hoax, but the possibility is an alarming one. Here's Mark Jones now with more. The Zodiac murders started in 1966. The killer sent cryptic letters to the San Francisco Chronicle. The letters rambled. They hinted at Satanism. This was a composite drawing of a suspect who was never caught. Between 1968 and 1987, someone calling himself the Zodiac claimed responsibility for up to 40 murders. Now, three shootings in New York, none fatal. A writer to the New York Post claims responsibility. The letter contains astrological signs and strange writing. Quote, this is the Zodiac. The 12 sign will die when the belts in the heaven are seen. A source of the New York Post says the note doesn't appear similar to the San Francisco Zodiac letters. The San Francisco police say the Zodiac case is still open, but it's not actively under investigation. In fact, many of the files in the case have been stored in Sacramento, and the original detectives in the case have retired. The New York letter has been faxed to San Francisco PD. This morning, it was examined by a document expert. Police were looking for specific items. 22 caliber pistols, a black executioner style hood, yellow taxi cab keys. Without revealing everything they found, I learned they did confiscate explosives. Bombs exactly like those the Zodiac serial killer described during his murder spree in the late 1960s and early to mid 1970s. I'm standing in front of the Vallejo home, which investigators searched last Valentine's Day, the home of the man police have suspected off and on for the last 20 years. That man, 52-year-old Arthur Allen, talked last week about the most recent search of his home. They took uh, a lot of my tapes. They took uh, uh, samples of my handwriting. Um, they screwed up a lot of my stuff here too but that that wasn't they didn't take that uh, they took a couple of typewriters but what was excised from the unsealed warrant at the request of police is the name of a new informant reportedly a man currently in jail on other charges a man believed to have information that could investigators say finally allow them to charge arthur allen as the zodiac i know who the guy was i'd never said a word to him i didn't like the punk and I said, well, this guy must be on the hot seat for something. Oh, no, no, he just he just phoned down and had volunteered this information. Well, I found out the next day from a different police officer that, yeah, he sure had. He was trying to plea bargain because he was facing 30-year rap on, on multiple armed robberies. The Zodiac is believed to be responsible for at least six murders, although in letters to police and a San Francisco newspaper, he claimed 37. The last of those letters came in 1974, and that is when Arthur Allen went to prison on a child molestation charge. But despite an uncanny resemblance to police sketches made from witnesses' accounts of the real Zodiac, Arthur Allen continues to say they've been following the wrong guy. I couldn't murder anyone. Officers from several jurisdictions who have worked on the Zodiac case for more than two decades say they don't expect to make any arrest soon. In Vallejo, Carol Ivey, Channel 7 News. The sky is the limit. I can talk over anything with my friends. And of course, this has been a matter of... Okay. According to the affidavit unsealed by a judge late this afternoon, an armed robbery suspect arrested in San Jose last December told police there that Arthur Allen, now 52 years old, is the infamous Zodiac. That information led Vallejo police to obtain a warrant and search Allen's home last Valentine's Day. They were looking for specific mm -hmm. Zodiac-related items. The identification, for instance, of cab driver, who was one of the victims. What they found were explosives, just like those the serial killer bragged about in letters to police and a newspaper 20 years ago. And during an interview here last Friday night with Channel 7 News, Arthur Allen claimed that he is being persecuted by Vallejo police. It's difficult as hell, and it can be... Ex <laughs> it can be terribly depressing. And if I deserved any of it, that would be something different, but I don't. 
but Alan has been a prime Zodiac suspect since at least 1971, suspected in the six murders connected to the astrology-oriented killer, a killer who claimed as many as 37 victims. Alan, who served four years in prison for child molestation, four years when the Zodiac was not heard from, is not averse to talking about the police's ceaseless pursuit. There are two types of liars in the world, fishermen and policemen, and not necessarily in that order. And their function is lying to you is to trip you up. They can't do it to me because I have nothing to trip over. But they sure Years ago, them. one handwriting analyst said Allen's penmanship does not match the Zodiac letters. But Allen, yeah, police very, say, very is very ambidextrous. And, and, and Another police uh, analyst said he could have, in the right mental state, successfully altered the samples he provided. So in Vallejo, Carol Ivey, Channel 7 out, News. And, uh, he came down here visiting me for a couple of days one time. The Zodiac Killer has haunted California's consciousness for more than 20 years. A mass murderer making his mark in the 60s by killing, then sending letters taunting police. Thousands of people have been interviewed, and the Zodiacs bounced in and out of the news. And through it all, there's been one constant, Arthur Allen. I'm not the Zodiac Killer. I know that. I, I know that deep in my soul. But Alan says the cops don't believe him. Alan says he's been a prime suspect off and on for 20 years, and now it's on again. Last February, the Vallejo police searching his home, he says. And now, he says, he's about had it. I've never been known for good luck, and I guess this is pretty much living proof of it. Now, Alan's no angel. He admits that. Says he's been busted for child molestation, served time, knows he was wrong. But whatever coincidences making him look like the Zodiac, he says, are only that, coincidences. Just point blank, are you a murderer? No. Are you the Zodiac killer? No, definitely not. No. I couldn't murder anyone. How do you live with this? It's difficult as hell, and it can be... Ex <laughs> it can be terribly depressing. And if I deserved any of it, that would be something different, but I don't. Michael Finney, Channel 7 News tonight. Episode of Millennium based on the mysterious real-life serial killer known only as the Zodiac. Tony Valdez looks back at the murder spree that claimed as many as 37 victims and to this day remains unsolved. <laughs> bloody world we lived in in the late 1960s. There was the war in Vietnam, the anti-war struggle here at home, and in Los Angeles, Charlie Manson's renegade family had hacked his way into immortality by stabbing to death pregnant actress Sharon Tate and six others. But even that kind of carnage couldn't compare for sheer terror with the 37 murders claimed by the San Francisco Bay Area serial killer who ominously called himself Zodiac. Zodiac's first murders were in the Vallejo area east of San Francisco. He was casting his horoscope uh, to choose the times to kill people. And what he was doing was targeting young people, usually by a body of water, usually on a Saturday night. Uh, a couple, sometimes out on their first date, and he talks for some period. One of the two people who survived the Zodiac attack helped grace the sketch the now infamous drawing of the killer. He could kill with knife, he could kill with gun. He did just about whatever he wanted, and uh, he had literally a godlike power. He had the power of life and death. You live because I'm not going to kill you. You die. <laughs> The killer's letters and postcards to newspapers and police almost always open with a curious choice of words. This is the Zodiac speaking. The letters usually contain ciphers, mysterious symbols forming a code that the Zodiac claimed would reveal his identity as well as his reason for killing. And the famous uh, economics professor uh, spoke that, and the motivation was that he wanted to hunt people because man was the most dangerous game. No one ever deciphered a name that made sense. The Zodiac even scrawled messages at some of the murder scenes. This one, on the door of a car his victims drove, notes the place, the dates of other murders, and the weapon used. Then suddenly, there were news reports about a Southern California connection. The unsolved murder of Riverside co-ed Sherry Jo Bates. She died two years before the Bay Area killings. 
Note the killer said to her father and to police were signed Z. And someone carved a poem into a wooden desk in the library where Sherry Joe was last seen. It reads like a preview of messages the Zodiac would write years later. In fact, in a 1971 letter, Zodiac wrote, I do have to give them credit for stumbling across my Riverside activity. They are only finding the easy ones. There are a hell of a lot more down there. Everyone to the moon. The murder of cab driver Paul Stein in downtown San Francisco on October 11, 1969, was the most blood-curdling Zodiac killing of all. He had shot the driver in full view of a party uh, being held by some teenagers. Gets out of the cab, wipes it down with a cab driver's shirt, uh, of which he tore off pieces and sent through the mail over the years, uh, and begins to stroll around the corner. And at this point, two policemen arrive, and Zodiac uh, stepped back into the shadows, uh, holding a gun behind his back, uh, they didn't know this was the guy they were looking for, and he sent them off in another direction. And he ambles off into uh, uh, the park where he watches the search for him later. By then, practically everyone in the Bay Area was under the Zodiac spell. He took a great deal of fear in the hearts of the uh, citizens and a lot of anxiety for police officers. He was this person uh, committing murders almost at, at will, random. Uh, it, we seem to see that the police were powerless to do anything about the murder seemed to stop in early 1970 with the official death toll at nine, although Zodiac claimed body counts that looked more like football scores. In this letter, it was San Francisco PD zero, Zodiac 17 plus. He eventually claimed to have killed 37 people. There were at least three different sketches done of the suspect. One of them seems to resemble convicted Unabomber killer Ted Kaczynski. So they both were here in San Francisco at the same time, both Zodiac and the Unabomber sent letters to the press and bomb diagrams uh, as Zodiac said. He threatened to blow up the police. The plans for that attack were contained in a Zodiac letter, but he wrote later that the bomb was a dud. Police do not believe Ted Kaczynski is also Zodiac. There are, however, at least five suspects who've been seriously considered over the years. Today at a website called the Zodiac homepage, there is a photograph of Arthur Lee Allen, the suspect most investigators believe to be Zodiac. Well, Alan was a scary guy. This is a guy with two uh, uh, master's degrees, uh, very physically powerful, uh, potentially an Olympic diver, diver at one time. He wore a, a wristwatch that had a cross circle on it that said Zodiac. He wore a Zodiac ring. But more the Zodiac letters stopped when Alan went to prison on a child molestation conviction. Some years ago, Alan talked about the Zodiac case while at the same time trying to protect his identity. The only way I could clear myself would be for the real Zodiac to confess that he's still alive. Alan kept claiming his innocence right up to his death in 1992. I'm not the Zodiac. I've never killed anyone. These guys almost, well, they, they had me questioning myself. Those investigators were apparently about to file murder charges, but Alan died in Vallejo of a heart attack. And he was found dead uh, in front of his computer uh, with a lump on his head in a bathrobe, uh, the clippings of the case, and a uh, disc in the machine that said Zodiac on it. So he says in the Chronicle, uh, actually I believe one of the policemen said that if Arthur Lee Allen were alive today, they would arrest him as a Zodiac. But what if all those investigators are wrong? What if Zodiac is still hunting, but now disguising not only himself, but also any connection between his murders? Robert Gray Smith is the author of Zodiac, the definitive book on the case. He spent years shadowing Arthur Lee Allen and paid the price for it. Uh, I'll tell you the most exciting Saturday night. Uh, for years, I got hang-up calls every Saturday night. All I hear is sort of like the sound of wind rushing on the phone. That went on for a long, long time until I finally changed my number. To this day, Gray Smith believes that the caller, whoever... The bus patrol started first in this county Wednesday. Police units from various agencies using marked and unmarked cars follow buses on their runs to and from schools. Assisted by aerial patrols and some buses now equipped with two-way police radios, the massive patrols are responses to the Zodiac killer's threat to stop a bus and shoot children. The patrols are concentrated in the remote sections of the county, similar to areas where five were murdered. The Napa School District is the third largest in the state in busing. Its 70 buses travel more than 4,000 miles a day. These patrols have been expanded to several counties, and the Highway Patrol has written guidelines for bus drivers. We have uh, specifically requested that they re alert their drivers to uh, not stop under any condition if a uh, shot is fired or if their bus is subjected to a flat tire by the sniper. 
further that they get the children down immediately and proceed with all speed out of the area. And uh, to try and attract uh, all the possible attention by blowing their horns, uh, and therefore get out of the situation. Is the Highway Patrol and other law enforcement agencies satisfied with these steps in the event this happens, help can come in time? Uh, we're satisfied that it is all that can reasonably be done under the circumstances that might be present at the particular time, giving due consideration to the vast number of buses operating. Have any of the drivers uh, expressed any concern over their job now? Well, uh, there's naturally talk. Everybody's, I guess, tense about it, but they all seem to be in good spirits and all seem to be going on with the job. I don't know of anybody that's quit. <laughs> Mood. They had uh, nothing on the body, very little bruises on the body, very little sign of a struggle. Uh, the similarity uh, involved in the cases are that they appear to be suffocated as the cause of death, but uh, it could result either from outright suffocation or from manual strangulation, although we have no broken bones in the neck area. So uh, that's the main similarity. One of the three earlier victims was sexually assaulted, I understand. Was this latest victim sexually assaulted? No, no, she wasn't. But one of the other girls was, that's true. Her, uh, Could there be some kind of a psychotic killer who feels the need to display these nude bodies in public places like schoolyards and parks? Well, I hate to look at it in that vein. Definitely there's someone that's uh, perpetrating these crimes, but uh, normally the school is out of session now, and it could have gone on for weeks before we would have ever discovered the body. Uh, uh, but I know of it. looks more like they're trying to conceal them than actually to, for the police to find them. Yeah, but it's weird. I mean, it's almost like the Zodiac Killer, in a sense. Well, it's hard to make a comparison with him in that vein, uh, but uh, you know, there's no question about it. It's, uh, it's a tremendous atrocity that's been perpetrated. And we're really seeking help from the public, and it's been through the media that we've identified the last three girls, and we hope we're showing the picture of this young girl that possibly someone will recognize her. The other uh, MO, as we call it, other girls, they're all young girls. There has been one black girl, the other three girls were white, but they range in age from 16 to 20. Now, these have all taken place on or around a Sunday. Is there any possibility that uh, there's some kind of a black magic or a satanic cult going on here? Well, I, uh, news to me and nothing that I've heard of or nothing that we've come up in our investigation in regard to some type of cult, but it, uh, indications are that these have been perpetrated on the weekend where they were dumped there on a Saturday and we discovered them on Sunday, but uh, one of them was right after a holiday, so the kind of a, a weekend or holiday uh, activity it appears at this time. Are you taking any precautions? Are you now sending out extra patrolmen perhaps on the weekends in these areas where this might happen? Well, of course, that isn't, you know, in my field, that would be up to other uh, patrol units. They, they've known about it, and I'm sure precautions are being taken, and all the, certainly all the police departments alerted to it, and uh, broadcasts have been put out. So what, what extra are you going to do to protect the public against this menace? There's obviously someone running around who's crazy. Well, that's definitely a possibility. Uh, there's... Uh, that the man has a problem with whoever it is, or man or man. But I mean, you're asking me questions that are out of my field. That uh, uh, this would be up to our patrol commanders. We're naturally want to apprehend it. My job is in the apprehension field. And uh, uh, as I say in this latest case, the biggest thing is uh, identification. We don't even know who the girl is yet. And uh, uh, very, very difficult because we have no crime scene. They're, they're murdered elsewhere and they're disposed on the street. Are any of these girls, were any of them junkies or drug users? Well, we can come up with nothing uh, uh, in the heavy field, heroin of this nature, but there has been an element of drugs involved in some of the cases, but that's certainly one angle we're investigating also. Can you give us any thoughts at all, any any hint about any lead, who, who might be doing this? No, we, we, uh, aside from the identification which we've received, we've received very little information from the public on these cases. The people just haven't seen it. That leads us to indicate that possibly there was murdered, uh, the crime was perpetrated in a building or out of sight or something like this, and we're just uh, abandoned in these areas. As you know, school grounds late at night or there's no one around in their isolated areas. And uh, we really haven't had anybody come forward that's seen any unusual activity that I aspect or seen any of these girls it would be struggling, things of this nature, and the girl's body 
uh, doesn't re reveal any bruises or, or anything. To no signs of a struggle. To indication of a struggle, right? As a personal injury to them, of course, if we had a scene where it could have happened, then that would be a different story. But uh, that, as sad as it sounds, it's, it's very sketchy and it's very... For the man known as the Zodiac Killer, the elements involved today included psychiatrists, astrologists, and police guards for school buses. Harry Drinkwater reports. School children are nice targets. I shall wipe out a school bus some morning, shoot out the tires, and then pick off the kiddies as they come bounding out. That was the threat of the Zodiac Killer. Now, every day, police cars follow the buses, which would be likely targets. Officers armed with shotguns take the threat seriously. The psychotic killer has already murdered five. One at a lover's lane near a lake just north of San Francisco. Three others in nearby Vallejo. The latest, a taxi driver in San Francisco. The Zodiac Killer seems to crave publicity. He sent letters and cryptograms to newspapers and the police recounting his crimes, threatening more murders, and making Bay Area residents very edgy. In his violent movements, or rather the violent, violent periods that he has been in, uh, he's an absolutely ruthless, completely merciless killer. He calmly goes about his business of, uh, in one case, telephoning the police, and another tearing a strip off the, off the shirt of the dead body of the immediately killed victim um he doesn't get great excitement over it. he he just um, he thinks killing is is just killing so somebody like that is going to be a very serious problem for us from witnesses there are two generally similar composite drawings he's around 30 reddish hair five feet ten crew cut but not much more than that is known today a meeting of lawmen and psychiatrists from all over the bay area they are weighing advice from astrologers on the theory that perhaps the killer who calls himself the Zodiac may be planning his next victim based on astrological signs. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, San Francisco. The call to Napa police came within an hour after the stabbings. A young man's voice reported the double murder. He described the couple, their car, the scene, and hung up. Police believe it was the suspect. The call was similar to one received by Vallejo police after the shooting of a young Lover's Lane couple there earlier. There have been three slayings in the Vallejo area in the past year, and activities at the sheriff's office today were centered around linking the cases. We have, of course, and have had in our department, uh, their reports uh, since their incidents, and uh, being so close to, to their area and feeling that it might come over in our area. We, of course, have been working very closely with Vallejo in checking state hospital patients and former patients because this guy is a pathological uh, psycho uh, killer. There's no doubt about it. Police and park rangers combed the scene for clues until late yesterday. It was here the couple was picnicking, and here a man in a mask robbed, tied, and stabbed them, leaving them for dead. He got 83 cents. But police say robbery wasn't the motive. He is probably a psychopath. The 22-year-old girl from Southern California, the boy 20 from Oregon, were taken out by ambulance. Access around the lake was roadblocked for 18 hours. Sergeant Bill White was first on the scene. And the guy told him to take the money. He said, I don't want it. He says, all I, want do, all I want to do is kill you people. I have to kill you. The boy asked him, said, you really mean that? He said, yes, I mean it. He says, um, well, he said, if you're going to do it, he said, kill me first, because I can't stand to see the girl be stabbed. He said, well, I'll do that. So he started stabbing the kid in the back. He told me 10, 12 times, but uh, he had so much blood him, I couldn't tell. I knew he was stabbed several times. And then he stabbed the girl. So, uh, Boy was conscious enough to give you a description of the man. Oh yes, they they was uh, they'd go out and come back and uh, it was taking some 35 minutes for the ambulance to get from Napa up here, which is uh, 20 miles, 25 miles away from this place. And uh, 
So they did a lot of talking. The, the boy thought he was gonna wasn't gonna make it. He wanted to tell, give a description to the guy best he could, about the best he could give us. That he had a hood over his face and a, he was a big guy, uh, six foot or better, over two hundred pounds. What was your reaction when you saw them? Well, I've been patrolling this lake now 11 years, and I've seen a lot of people that have been cut up by boats and this and that, and uh, for no reason at all, that's about the worst I've ever seen. The kids just chopped up, real nice college kids, just stabbed for no reason at all. I, I, I never witnessed anything like it before. Just, um, described in, in all the media as a, a nut, an insane person, a screwball, and all of this sort of thing. And I don't go along with this. I think, and I have studied all of the letters, I think that this man is legally sane. We all know the difference. Legal sanity, of course, being a knowledge of the difference between right and wrong, and also um, a knowledge that what one has done is forbidden and therefore taking the action of fleeing from the police. This man has certainly exhibited that much um, intelligence or rationality. Two letters arrived on Monday, and the Chronicle let police criminologists open them. They were apparently from the man who has killed five or perhaps more persons in the last few months. One was a greeting card, a sick joke, you might say, in which the murderer said he is so lonely he could do his thing. The other was a letter claiming seven victims and indicating anger at the police for telling lies about him. The writer said he will change his tactics by making his murders look like robberies, anger killings, or fake accidents. Enclosed was a cryptogram or code as yet unsolved. He had sent codes before and most have been rambling, similar to his written notes. Zodiac said he shall never be caught and that he only looks like this composite drawing when he wears a disguise in which he commits his crimes. After last month's letters and the murder of a cab driver, the Zodiac threatened to kill children on a school bus. So bus guards were provided in many Bay Area counties, including these at Napa. Police say most of those precautions have been halted. And now in the latest letter, the Zodiac says, if you cops think I'm going to take on a bus the way I stated I was, you deserve to have holes in your heads. To prove his authenticity, the Zodiac sent along this time, as he did before, a piece of the shirt belonging to the cab driver he murdered. Police don't doubt that the letter writer is the killer, though they don't believe he is responsible for the murder of two girls in San Jose, as he hints. At police headquarters today, officers said they will eventually catch him and that they have clues they can't discuss publicly. Chief of Inspectors Martin Lee spoke with the press. And that it might be identified by someone. On the other hand, we have uh, this uh, length of rope. This is a uh, 33 feet length of rope. The rope, as you can see, is uh, a white nylon uh, interwoven with a, a strand of a bright orange a polyethylene type material in the white nylon. We also have in our possession an American flag. Uh, this American flag is uh, approximately four feet by six feet in dimension. It was manufactured by the Paramount Flag Company in San Francisco. And it's a heavyweight uh, cotton flag uh, which contains 48 stars. And this in turn indicates uh, the approximate age of the flag. Uh, we also have in our possession a uh, a barracks bag. This bag is olive drab in color of the type uh, commonly used in the Army and the Marine Corps. The bag which we have has been cut in half, and this department is in possession of the bottom half only. The bottom portion has a handle attached and bears the stenciled partial name and letters ES and then F. And then a last name, C-A-M-I-C-I-A. -I -I -A. Uh, we are uh, receiving information uh, daily uh, about these articles. And uh, because of the evidence value of these articles and, and uh, the use with, uh, with which we'll be using them, uh, 
the district attorney and myself have decided that we will not comment further about uh, specific information which we are receiving. Although uh, we are asking the citizens if they know of these uh, articles or where they might have come from to let us know.